final. Milan are looking to put even more pressure on their old enemies. Juventus versus Milan. November 21st on BN Sports. Still waiting for the players to come back out onto the pitch for the start of the second half here. Panama on the road at Independence Park in Kingston, Jamaica with a one goal lead. Armando Cooper with a spectacular free kick that you'll be seeing on the highlight reels throughout the week. Panama up 1-0 on Jamaica. This halftime was brought to you by Volkswagen. Isn't it time for German engineering? Give the gift of more. Switch to Cricket Wireless and choose from four smartphones, now free, after mail-in rebate Cricket Visa promotion card. From the merrier carrier, Cricket Wireless. Something to smile about. He is arguably one of the most gifted athletes today. His skills and moves are indecipherable, destabilizing, and unique. Every play is a masterpiece. He is a machine of strength and speed. Always hungry for more, and precision is his lethal weapon. The best two players in the world face off in the most watched sporting event in the world. Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Make way for El Clasico on Be It Sports. It's a long right? We forgot Dave. Thank you. So, can the test drive be over now? Maybe head back to the dealership? It's practically yours, but we still need your signature. The Sign Then Drive event. Zero do it signing, zero down, zero deposit, and zero first month's payment on a new Tiguan and other select Volkswagen models. Anthony Lopez and two new stars join the French constellation. Stefan El Sharawi and Di Maria. The League on Star shine here on B Sports. Five minutes in the books here at Independence Park. Jamaica hoping for a better showing in the second half. Thoroughly outplayed in the first 45 minutes of play. Outshot 9-1 to one in total. 4-1 to one in terms of shots on target. And Mateo Panama looking good. Oh, looking very good. They've come here to Kingston and they've really dictated this entire match so far. They've created most of the opportunities, if not all of them. And been very disappointed with Jamaica. This is just a continuation of what we saw from the reggae boys after that two-legged affair against Nicaragua where they just nearly got to the stage, you know. It could have easily been Nicaragua right here. Players out on the pitch for the start of the second half. They'll switch ends of the field here for the second period. As you can see, Panama lining up on the right side of the field from your perspective. They'll be in the all reds. Jamaica in the yellow tops, the black shorts, the yellow socks. They'll be going left to right on your screen here. So what has to change in the second half, Mateo? Is there any way that Jamaica can turn the tables here? Absolutely. I mean, I thought that they would really give a hard time to Panama, who several times they've been a bit error prone at the back and giving away possession easily. And Jamaica just haven't been able to hold possession. They need to commit to playing a more attacking brand. Underway now in the second half from Independence Park on a muggy night. Normal Jamaican conditions. 80 degrees, 80% humidity. Well, Nothing can, Panama can't handle. You know, we barely see Joss Barnes and Maddox in any sort of position. And that's not really down to them. It's more down to the midfield and their inability to just string together more than a few passes in a row. Well, that's one thing that Panama has done throughout this contest. They've had five midfielders pretty much clogging things up, overwhelming the four of Jamaica, particularly in the center of the park. Las Pedas has been the lone striker up top, but he's getting a lot of help out of the midfield. Right now, the reggae boys. Lawrence gets this in. Maddox trying to get back to the ball. Oh. Defense 
Oh, that was very physical defense. Felipe Baloy and Maddox in a wrestling match, but both players holding on to one another. Austin drops it back all the way. Chance to come forward now for Panama. Hard hit there, though. Michael Hector commits the foul. Alberto Quintero goes down on the play. Guatemala and Trinidad and Tobago match has gone final, by the way. Trinidad and Tobago, 2-1 winners. And we have a stoppage in play here. As Kamar Lawrence is down on the far sideline. Or Jamaica. That late goal in the Guatemala game scored by Carlos Mejia of Guatemala, scoring it in stoppage time. Not enough, though. Cooper makes his way toward the ball. Scored a spectacular free kick toward the end of the first half. This one's going to be just a bit farther away. I have to float this one in over the top. Movement there from Quintero. Trying to see what the defense does. It's going far post, looking for Baloy. Too close to the goalkeeper, though, and Kerr has it. Well, we do have more action coming for you on the international break on Tuesday. But after that, the greatest players on earth, the biggest battle in sports. Real Madrid will look to close the gap on table topping Barcelona in the first Clasico of the season. Grab a ringside seat Saturday, November 21st, right here on BN Sports. It'll be next weekend. Kerr puts this one back into play. Out of bounds. This will go over to Panama. to the wing. Machado. Mattel. Gomez and then Baloy, the team captain. Las Perez asked for it. Yeah, just slightly overhit. Las Perez will get those legs moving fast enough to reach onto that one, but see Panama continually trying to find Blas Pettis into a position of danger. They've come so close to allowing Pettis to take a shot on goal, but several times he's taken that extra touch and allowed either one of the two center backs for Jamaica to close down the space and prevent Pettis from going for goal. It's not far off for scoring more than 40 goals, Pettis, with his national team. What an incredible record. Current leading scorer in this particular call-up for Panama. Long throwing coming here from Mariapa. Into the 18-yard box. Loose. Easily handled by the Panamanian defense. As Enrique clears it out of the box. 
Austin now puts a touch on it for Jamaica. Os Perez applying some pressure up top. He forces the turnover here. This is more or less how Panama likes to go about their business. One nothing, a typical result for them. Again, right now, the inconsistencies in Jamaica's offense showing up here. And dealt. Now forward. Godoy ends it out wide. Quintero sends the cross into the box. Oh. Finds its way over the head of Kerr and a lucky goal. Blas Perez didn't even touch it, but he'll go and celebrate Panama now up 2-0. <laughs> Oh, he's holding his arms up in the sky. He says, I didn't have anything to do with that goal. It's the delivery play it in. And there it comes. It's the number 19. Alberto Quintero swings it in. And then a miscommunication, a deflection. Wes Morgan involved there. So take a look at the replay. And for Dwayne Kerr, he had committed himself to come out of his spot to Corrales, here's a better look as the ball swung in and, oh, and it doesn't look like anyone gets a touch onto it. Nobody. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Just takes a bounce right in between Wes Morgan and the goalkeeper, Kerr. Kerr expecting Morgan to get a touch onto that one. Instead, he's going to ground and the ball harmlessly just bounces right over him. And Blas Pérez saying, I didn't have to do anything. Incredible. When Alberto Quintero tells the story of that goal to his grandkids, it's going to be a spectacular strike from outside the box. Oh, it's the most bizarre goal <laughs> that he'll probably ever score, Gino. And right there, it's unfortunate for Jamaica as the ball bounces right in between the space where Kerr was diving and the defender, Wes Morgan, was lunging. They just seem all kinds of out of whack right now. For a team that had such a, a brilliant summer. That's oh, a terrible mistake, though, consistently shooting themselves in the foot, this Jamaica side. At the back, they've hardly looked convincing here. They've been put constantly under pressure by this very impressive Panamanian side. Looking like they're playing at home. Here's another look at it. Oh, that is incredible. It's a terrible mistake at the back as Morgan just misjudges the flight of the ball. And when Kerr going to ground, he's assuming that the touch is going to come. And instead, it just bounces right over and makes the goalkeeper look foolish. Well, Gino, we've seen two incredibly strange goals here today. Oh, the first one was impressive. The second one here is comical and tragic. Tragic if you're a Reggae Boys fan. Oh, we've seen weirder things that it's not like Panama are so solid at the back. They have shown holes wider than the Panama Canal in recent matches. So let's see if Jamaica are able to exploit and more importantly, Gino, able to get any sort of fluidity in this match. That's what we've missed from these reggae boys. Just absolutely no ideas going forward. No cohesiveness, no game plan. They just haven't been able to consistently stay in Panama's half and keep them pinned down there. I'll tell you the truth, Mitchell. I haven't I haven't seen Giles Barnes in about a half hour. Well, it's not really his fault, though. It's all about the midfield. They need to get the, those passes into either one of the two strikers, Barnes or Maddox, and put them in a good position. Aaron Maddox has been starved as well. Remember, he scored in Jamaica's last four competitive contests. Has two goals already in qualifying. He's just nowhere to be found today. Jamaican midfield not doing its job. Panama looks solid. This also might just be one of those matches where 
as a fan of Jamaica, you just throw your hands up after that last goal, and it's like maybe tonight just isn't our night. A spectacular free kick, a folly of a goal. And there you are, down to nothing. Middle on the ball. Handled by the Jamaican defense, Kerr. Sends it back out to the wing. Kamar Lawrence, the Red Bulls youngster, feeds it back to Austin. And again, Jamaica has to retreat. Over the top, trying to use their speed now, but overshooting McEnough on the play. So many times, you know, they've been going for these long balls, Jamaica, rather than trying to play the simple ball short, looking for the options closer by. Instead, continually try to whip the ball forward. A bit panicky in possession. Free kick restart for Jamaica. Play it short. Turn the ball over, Gomez. Out on the flank, Lawrence. Trying to keep in possession. Goes out of play, it'll stay with the reggae boys. You can tell. Trying to get away from two defenders there from the Reggae Boys. Make a winning the possession back. And again, they want to tune in on Tuesday for some more CONCACAF action. New generation with the same goal. World Cup qualification. Join BN Sports pit side, Trinidad and Tobago, and the USA. Join us as the road to Russia continues Tuesday, November 17th, 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Again, Jamaica trying to come forward. Brilliant job of defense, though, from Panama. And again, Canaleros finding their way out of trouble. All credit as well, Gino, to Hernandario Gomez, the Panamanian coach. Knows CONCACAF inside out to Colombian. Also managed Colombia. Very strict disciplinarian sort of coach. And right now we've seen perhaps his style on this team. The way they've played, very organized for the most part, apart from two turnovers that gave Jamaica a short field temporarily. But I think overall, this Panama side looks very composed, very balanced as well. They look at complete control here on the road, and it's it's fairly impressive to tell you the truth. Maybe Jamaica also made it missing when he's Schaefer barking out the instructions on the touchline. Has been a rather stoic, motionless Miguel Coley there. As Maddox trying to make something happen there, but too many defenders in the way. Still plenty of time to get a point. Need to commit more to the attack. Send these balls in. Allow Maddox and Giles Barnes to have something to feast on. 30 minutes is plenty of time. We've seen far stranger things in football. Now at the hour mark, still 2-0. To Panama, Kamar Lawrence clears this one up the pitch. Brought down by Barnes, who gets a touch to it. And then heads up the pitch. McEnough gets it back out to Barnes. They want to keep going forward, Jamaica, but running out of options as they go forward. McEnough thought there should have been a foul called. Out of play. Trying the best he can, Maddox. 
And now a change, the first of the match for Jamaica. So Donaldson will come on in place of Maddox, who just hasn't been on his game tonight. Again, not really receiving all that good a service, but nonetheless, a change is going to have to be made. That's a good player coming in, Gino. One with plenty of experience and just trying to give a fresh introduction. As you can hear the reception right now from the crowd here in Kingston booing. It's going to be Donaldson, the man to come on, the number eight. First cap for Jamaica. He's from Birmingham City FC, 31 years of age, Clayton Donaldson. And he's been all over. Birmingham, pretty good goal ratio, but Brentford is where he really started to make his name in the lower divisions of English football. Playing in the championship. He's really bounced all over. He was born in Bradford in England. Whole city youth player, and he's really bounced around throughout his career in that pyramid of English football. Harrogate Town, Scarborough, Halifax Town, Harrogate Town, York City. And then he went on to climb the leagues, Crew Alexandra, Brentford, and finally Birmingham City. So he's really been a journeyman and a great opportunity for Donaldson. He's gotten into the mix early on here. He's immediately the target man for the Reggae Boys. Mariapa turning this around. Can't get back to the ball, though. Still stays with the Reggae Boys. Already see Donaldson working his way into position there. At the top of the Jamaican formation. Had a chance to put a play on that one, but B. Mantel was there. First time in five matches that Darren Maddox doesn't score for the Reggae Boys. They just haven't had anything going tonight. And maybe you're right, Mateo. Maybe Winfred Schaefer on the sidelines has an effect. Well, Gino, where's that incisive pass into the final third? They haven't kept it on the ground. Just constantly booting the ball up in the air but it's not giving the strikers much to really feast on we haven't seen any combinations any one twos or passing around the box trying to build the possession get a touch and try to send the player through on goal and so now a free kick opportunity here for the reggae boys Starting to get a little late. Sizing it up McCleary. This one too high. Drifts out of play. And the crowd not happy. And they have every right to be. You have everybody up. It's a good opportunity. Get those big center backs up. Try to get a header on goal. And instead, can't even keep the set piece in the pitch. Really frustrating night for the Reggae boys and it took about 60 minutes, but now the whistle's growing more and more rampant here at the National Stadium. Watson thought he had come away with possession here. The FC Dallas midfielder called for a handball. Having a heated debate there with Robert Orozco, the official. Kept in play. Quintero tries to get it forward for Las Perez, gets it back. Turned over and then an immediate foul. The Reggae Boys trying to keep the pace up. Mariapa can't play it forward. That one looked like it easily could have gone the other way. Donaldson trying to win possession for Jamaica, but instead it goes back over to Panama. Hey. 
Things starting to grind to a halt here at Independence Park. Rare bad ball from Panama. Morgan. Has to do what he can to get rid of the ball. And again, the reggae boys lose possession. Armando Cooper gives it right back. Rudy Austin trying to stay on the ball. Eventually gets fouled by Blas Perez. Cleared away by the captain, Baloy. Have to wonder if recent events might still be in the head of the Jamaican players. They did cancel a training session on Thursday. Where it is, it was about unpaid wages. At a closed door meeting with the president of the Jamaican Federation. That appears to have been sorted out. Perhaps the players not thinking entirely about football as this one's deflected out of play. It will be a corner kick. Well, at least now they are bringing more and more players up the pitch. But still, it's a low percentage shot from that distance, drifting away from goal. Trying to create anything is Joby McEnough going for glory there, but nowhere near. Austin keeps it going, gets it out wide. Knock enough. Settles it, scoops it in over the top. Yeah. Battle to get to the ball, but goalkeeper's going to win out here, and Calderon covers it up. Well, that not far off, and was on side, but ball had a little bit too much weight behind it, allowed the goalkeeper to come out. And Calderon does just that, has plenty of time to react to the ball and go and grab it from the air. It's hanging in the air quite a bit. It's never going to trouble Panama. Look at the road ahead for these two sides. After this, Jamaica will travel to Haiti, and that'll be on Tuesday. And then March of next year, as we have a change here for Jamaica. Jamaica will be at home playing Costa Rica. Aldous Powell, the 21 year old from the Portland Timbers, comes on. Another one of the players brought in from a MLS playoff side. Just trying to do anything to. Getting new legs there in the center of the pitch where they've been so stacking in Jamaica. Didn't see too much from Gareth McCleary. 28 year old who plays at Rennie. Powell comes on having earned 21 caps for Jamaica. Already made his debut back in December of 2012. This one shot. Wide of the post. And like a striker would, Gino. Blas Perez always screaming for the ball, even though he was marked there. Had two defenders in front of him, and it's the midfielder, Valentin Pimentel, going for goal. Nowhere near, but ambitious attempt from Pimentel, who certainly looked like he has plenty of confidence here today. Doesn't even have 10 caps yet, but really looks like one for the future, Pimentel. Sure. The Mr. Hernan Gomez is to continue giving Pimentel some chances in the starting 11. Pimentel lays into Rudy Austin He's a here. big presence, isn't he? He's been involved throughout the pitch. We've seen him out wide, drift back into the midfield, come forward and try to link up with the forward. Harmlessly back to the keeper, Calderon in net. We talked about Jamaica's path here in the early going. Panama, 
After this, they'll play Costa Rica at home. That'll be on Tuesday. And then in March, they'll travel to Haiti. And then turn around and host Haiti. And Tuesday after that. It's hard to pick two teams to come out of this group. Although right now it's looking like Panama looking the better between these two sides. As Gomez puts this one out of play. Frustration starting to show on these Jamaican players. Miguel Coley coming up short on answers. Donaldson got a touch to it. Mariapa now. Forward into the midfield. Watson gets it forward. And well for him. Onside. An attempted shot there from Watson. This is completely. Kamar Lawrence eats it back in. Loose ball. And rolls harmlessly to Calderon. That was a bit better, but I'm wondering if Giles Barnes should have tried to split the two defenders with that initial pass, that through ball, but instead. He stays to the outside, and it means that Powell gets closed down, and he just has to try to cross it in rather than cutting inside into the box. So another potentially dangerous attack stymied by the visitors. And I think it all has to do with that final ball into the final third. You know, that's what's really evaded Jamaica, that quality, that final ball to really pick your spot. And that incisive through ball to put one of the strikers into a really good one-on-one -on -one situation. We just haven't seen any of it. And all credit to the way Panama has closed down defensively. They've looked pretty organized when they are on the back foot. The midfielders have worked very hard, and these supporters that have traveled, they deserve to dance and really party if this result holds because this Panama side has been so impressive. Going to Kingston and Getting this sort of result. I know there's still plenty of time, but we haven't seen any indication that Jamaica are going to crawl their way back in this one. Look at them, Gino. It's already a party here in Kingston, but not for the Jamaicans. They can feel it in the crowd, but it's the Panamanian fans feeling it. That's not good. Armando Cooper being taken off on a stretcher, strapped down. That strap looks rather tight. Even he's complaining, saying loosen it up. Being arrested. Ball's put out of play. And just like that, it looks like he's coming back in, so maybe a bit overly dramatic with that tight strap. Maybe that's, just, sorry. maybe that's just protocol. I've never seen it before. Barnes tries to feed this one into the box, put out of play by the defender, though, Richard Dix. Twenty-three years old out of Chorillo. Back enough. Gonna send this one in. Goes to the penalty spot. Swing and a miss there from Rudy Austin. Chance to go forward for Panama. All of a sudden, they have numbers. Oh, Cooper. Poor ball. Tries to get it forward for Blas Perez. What a great opportunity that was on the counterattack. It was a three on one, and the ball just too short to really release one of those two options forward. McEnough sends this one low to the ground into the 18 yard box. That is a poor ball, though. Should have done so much better with that attempt. That really could have been an easy counterattack to get a third and final goal to nail that coffin in. Now Pimentel and Wes Morgan get tangled up. Both players going for the ball here. Both players sto showing studs. Here's another look. Let's see here is oh, just a really 
tough challenge. Pimentel and Morgan both sticking a boot in. And here's a better look at it. Yeah, that is a crunching challenge between two men, a 50-50. And both players feeling the side effects after that one. Pimentel, maybe more so, but looks like he'll be fine. Gino, I see you squirming over there. Are you all right? That was a hard one. Yellow card for Pimentel. Didn't see whether or not Wes Morgan got one, too. He's used to that kind of challenge. Wes Morgan, Premier League experience. He bangs bodies with some of the best and most physical number nines in European football. What a season he's having. Leicester City, more importantly, so close to the top of the table. Who could have predicted that? Incredible. Well, there's Pimentel's booking. Alvis Powell tried to send one into the box there for Jamaica, but he's turned over. Las Perez gets it over to Cooper. Cooper. As Godoy sends it out wide. Gabriel Gomez gets a touch to it. The ball is going to stay with Panama. Hasn't seen much of the ball, Clayton Donaldson, but that's been the case with all of the Jamaican forwards tonight. Cooper. Over the first goal of the night for Panama on a brilliant free kick. Now a chance for Los Canaleros into the 18-yard box, squared by Alberto Quintero. But out of play, though, leads to a corner kick. No, nope, not a corner kick. Quick throw in. And again, Alvis Powell involved. Kerr will put this back into play. Down to about 12 minutes remaining in regulation time here at Independence Park. Trying to find Donaldson there. Too many defenders in the area, though. against Blas Perez. Nice play there from Powell. Has his feet taken out from underneath him, though. I've made some good plays since coming onto the pitch. Very aggressive out there at the right back spot. That's what he was brought in to do, to inject some energy into that midfield. They're so stagnant. Opening 70 minutes or so of this match. Now this is a real good opportunity once again. All the big men forward. This is the biggest strength for Jamaica, their aerial game. But you need that right kind of service in. So far, it's been mostly abysmal coming in from these set pieces. Can he put it into a good position? Mackinac. Feeds it in, Great far ball. post, headed on and just wide of the post. A lot better there, going for the far post, had plenty of options, and it's the biggest man on the pitch, Wes Morgan there. And he's well covered, but somehow, it looks like he got the touch, but then the deflection coming off of, was it Dennis Pettis? Another way, another chance for Jamaica. Sent in again, this one considerably worse on the service. Loose ball. And a chance here for Panama. Nope, snuffed out. Powell tries to feed it back into the box. A little bit too hasty. And a good job by Austin to make sure that Panama doesn't break out. Inside of 10 minutes now. Panama would like nothing more than to keep this at 2-0. Take this three points with them. enough into the box. Powell. Trying to get the angle right, trying to shoot from the outside of his foot. No luck. How difficult was that ball going across his body?
from that angle, and he tries to get it on the right foot. Basically cutting through it to get that effect that it's curling to the inside, looking for that top corner. Would have been a sensational strike. Forwards have been starved tonight for Panama. Those two really lacking the service that it takes for them to be effective. We've seen Barnes get on the ball a few times in the second half, but most of those times are when he's had to drop back into the midfield. Donaldson has stayed up top pretty much since coming on. Hasn't seen much service, though. Panama trying to break out here. Got numbers. Four on three. Out wide, Pimentel pokes it back toward the inside. Quintero sends it across the formation. A settle, a shot, no, another shot. Armando Cooper twisting, turning. Blas Perez tries to go, can't get it right. That has been brilliant here today, Armando Cooper. So tricky there. Gets in between defenders, finds Blas Perez, who is constantly screaming for the ball, just wants to be put in a position to score as well, wants to get in on the party. And they're just not quick enough to release that shot and gets the close down deflection off the Jamaican defender. So Javon Watson will come off. Dever Orgil will come on. 25 years of age, making his third appearance for the national team. Yet another forward brought on to try and break this scoreless drought for the reggae boys. Jose Calderon punches this one away. Knock enough. Cuts inside. Gets it forward, loose ball inside the 18. But out of play of the Panamanian defender, and it looks like the Reggae Boys will keep the pace up here. A player trying to come on for Panama. I'm at the fourth official. Right now, the Reggae Boys just trying to keep the pressure on. Mariapa can't get to it. Austin on the ball now, has a go from well outside the 18, and well off on the shot. It's a very ambitious hit in that distance. Oh, short, trying to find a better option. You're not going to score from that position, are you? And again, I said that right before the free kick from Cooper, and that went in, so maybe I should stay quiet. Either way, that's been really the story for Jamaica, these low percentage shots. They haven't looked for that extra pass, and when they have, it just hasn't been accurate enough, Gino. He's coming off now, Cooper. He was brilliant today. An Great game. excellent, excellent goal. A world-class set piece. He's tricky when he was in possession, going by multiple defenders. And maybe Enrique is the number 21 to come in. Fresh legs. Worked so hard, Cooper, even in his defensive work, tracking back to the midfield. It was a team effort from Panama to keep Jamaica off the scoreboard and keep them from creating much of anything. Amircar Enriquez comes on, 32 years of age, plays for America de Cali, making his 69th appearance for Panama. Also coming on to the pitch. Abdul Arroyo. Arroyo comes on to provide some help at the top of the formation for Blas Perez. 21 years of age, another member of Arabe Unido, making his ninth appearance for Panama. The veteran, 
celebrated a goal that wasn't his. Didn't take credit. Pimentel into the 18-yard box. Panama with a chance here. Snuffed out, though. Good job by Wes Morgan. And a long boot up the park. Balls for Gabriel Gomez. And a foul. Going to keep the ball with Panama. There you saw again Giles Barnes having to drop deep into the midfield to get any kind of a touch on the ball. It's been starved the service. It's all he's been able to do. And since the opening whistle, I saw Giles Barnes being the striker out of him and Darren Maddox. He'd be the one that would come back to the midfield to try to get possession, get on the ball, even try to create for Maddox, who didn't see much of anything coming his way. Well, he was substituted off. Another hard foul here. Make a running short on time. Another quick restart here. Everyone sent forward. The heck of a boot. Into the 18-yard box. Foul is called on Wes Morgan. Big defender trying to get into the mix. Trying to put one on goal, but no luck. So physical, isn't he? But such a big man that even the slightest contact will send the opposition sprawling that time. It was a foul there as he's see the forearm going up, elbow right into the rib cage. Uh, Felipe Baloy trying to just move him so that ball could squirt through. It's a correct decision once again. In the midst of the international break now, but you've got to be wondering if you're a fan of European soccer. When are we going to see Real Madrid and Barcelona go at it? Well, it's coming your way. Your Sergeant Ronaldo and a mended Messi could make for a classic classical next weekend. The Blaugrana beat the Merengues in the latest battle of the Bernabeu. Get the views of Dutch Levin, Patrick Kluivert, and Spanish champion league winger Luis Garcia. Live and direct on BN Sports. That coming your way Saturday, November 21st. Classico on BN Sports. So many great games coming up on the channel between USA and Trinidad and Mexico taking on Honduras. And then, of course, El Clasico. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Battling it out still here at Independence Park. 2-0 the score to the away side. Jamaica looking like a frustrated side here. And they'll have some changes to make before Tuesday, no doubt. Just a little bit of extra there from Wes Morgan on Perez. There it is. Showing him his presence, but Wes Perez won't care. All that matters to him is this result. The veteran leading the line. He's constantly provided a threat. He's been able to suck away the attention from the defenders and allow spaces for some of his teammates. Always draws plenty of attention anytime he's inside the box. Going forward again, Panama. Good job by the defender that time, though. It's Powell has it now, trying to decide what to do with it. House Barnes all the way back with the defenders. Four minutes to be added on for stoppages. fight to get back to the ball here. There's the signal from the fourth official. And again, Kerr boots it up the pitch. Back enough. That's Powell streaking down the right-hand side. Into the 18-yard box. The Reggae boys, the turnaround shot. Oh. This one almost finds the near post. Number of chances there in front of net. There it is. First, the shot coming in, the deflection. Here it is, and it's from a rather strange position. You didn't think that the goalkeeper would have much problem from there, and then goes clattering into Clayton Donaldson. Yeah, there it is. Is Donaldson going for the ball? I thought that could have easily been awarded as a penalty, Gino. 
Caitlin Donaldson in a pretty good position to try to get on the ball and just redirect it back towards the center of the box and the goalkeeper there. Looks like he got first the ankle as he was reaching across, trying to parry the ball away out of bounds and instead he got a lot of Donaldson. Could it have been offsides? No, it didn't look like it from there. Foul from behind here. By the way, it's a bit questionable the control from Jose Calderon. Thought he'd be able to hold on to that one rather than parry it wide. It looked like he had too much pace behind it. it. Was on his own post. Didn't have to move too much to get to it. Hector from Reading sends this one into the box and it finds the hand of the goalkeeper at least. Oh, that's what we've been waiting for this entire match. A fine set piece delivery right into the heart of the box. Jill on that shot. You know, Jill just getting that header. Looks like it would have clanged off the crossbar, but not taking any chances. The goalkeeper Calderon. And back toward the goal. Ball is settled. Powell gets it wide. McEnough scoops it back into the mixer, headed toward goal again, and this one is just high. Oh, they're saving all these great balls into the box for the final minute of the match. Once again, two fine deliveries back to back, finally giving the big man a chance. Roberto Chen getting set to come on now for Panama. Chen who plays for Linense in Spain. 21 years of age, this is 11th cap for the national side. Coming off is Gabriel Gomez. Gomez had a solid match. And there's the change that, the final change of the match for Panama. Now all six changes have been made, three for each side. That more of a time-wasting thing than anything. Here's another look at that last header. It's just slightly high above the crossbar. Two good attempts, though, in the final stages of the match from Jamaica. We've been waiting for that all game long. Jamaica travels to play Haiti on Tuesday. Looks like this will be the final kick of the match and everyone getting forward, but too little, too late. Panama will be at home to Costa Rica. And again, both those matches can be seen here on BN Sports as the CONCACAF qualifiers continue. 2-0 the final score. Panama goes into Independence Park in Kingston. Does the job, a free kick goal, and one of the stranger crosses that finds its way to the back of the net. You'll see 2-0. To the Canaleros. What a win for Panama, but more importantly, a deserved win. 2-0. Didn't see much from Jamaica. Unconvincing. And Panama looked like quite a scary side right now in group. For Mateo Benetti, I'm Gino Fuentes. Thank you for joining us. Panama wins 2-0 on the road in Independence Park. This game was brought to you in part by Coors Light. Cricket. And Ford. Alucinante. By design. Seduciendo by design. Here's something to shout from the mountaintop. Cricket's plans start at $35 a month after $5 auto pay credit with more 4G LTE coverage nationwide than T-Mobile or Sprint. Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. When a mountain needs to refresh things, it doesn't call for a cleaning service. It uses the cold to sift through every single speck. So if you wonder what inspired us to cold filter our beer,